This is going to be one of the wilder, more magical theories, so if you're not down for that, then still stay because I want you to hear how nuts I am. Inspired by this message on Tumblr, I present you all with this. Arcadia Bay itself is alive. It is the raven. The raven is Arcadia Bay's eyes and voice. As previously noted, the raven can be seen as the messenger of the gods. Maybe the god of Arcadia Bay works through the raven. This type of creature is often referred to as an eldritch location in which the area itself is both magical and has a will of its own. So in essence, the raven is a manifestation of Arcadia Bay's will. When William is taken over by the Raven, as I explained in this other video, he starts talking in a more alien tone, and things get much more strange and metaphoric. This could be because it's basically an alien entity trying to explain things to Chloe in ways she can understand. Why are you crying, sweetheart? Imagine trying to explain to a dog that if they touch something, they will get hurt. You can't. Even though both you and the dog can communicate in some ways, it is still limited. Thankfully, the raven can show people the future without it hurting them. Hint, hint. But whatever, if you look in the journal during the stream, you can see some references to the distant future with Max. A drawing of Max wearing her clothes in the events of Life is Strange, and some text then for that Max won't see Chloe until she's dead. Which is true, Max doesn't see Chloe until she dies. So this proves the Raven can see that far ahead in time, all the way to the events up and through Life is Strange. And it also means it knows the evils that are coming as well, aka Mr. Jefferson. And I've pointed out before that the Raven also shows Chloe where to find Rachel and what it plans for Rachel to do. In order for Rachel to set fire to the forest, she needed Chloe's lighter. If Chloe never went to find Rachel, the fire never would have happened. So the Raven showed Chloe what it wanted to happen. For Chloe to give Rachel fire. And remember, fire is not always bad. It can be a symbol of regrowth and rebirth, like a phoenix. Or like how Evan says. Who says we should prevent fire? Fire is awesome. While I realize you're being purposefully obstructive, you raise a good point. Many parts of our local ecosystem benefit from fire. Knobcone pine cones, for example, which require temperatures above 350 degrees to open. And other people have noted that the tree is a reference to how some Native American tribes use trees as ways to mark roads and different directions and waypoints and such. So maybe setting fire to the tree is some sort of beginning, like this is the right direction to go in. So, if the raven can communicate via dreams, then maybe the dream in Life is Strange Episode 5 was controlled by the raven as well. There are a lot of similarities in that it shows prophetic changes in the text messages in journal. When we meet what some call Evil Max, is that actually the raven chastising Max for misusing her powers? Can you get me out of here? Oh, so you want help? <laughs> Thought you could control everybody and everything, huh? Twist time around your fingers. I only wanted to do the right thing. No, you only wanted to be popular. Oh, yeah. And once you got these amazing powers, your big plan was to trick people into thinking you give a rat's ass. <gasps> then also coming in as Chloe to contradict itself and correct itself. Dude, do not even fuck with her head. She knows what we went through together this week, and you don't. There's no way you can break up our team. This is reality. Like it gave a teenager a bunch of powers, like what you think was gonna happen, Eldric God of Arcadia Bay. <laughs> Remember that the Raven is sort of an alien consciousness, so communication will be weird. It's neither a good or evil God or entity or magical thing. It's just something that exists. Which is why it shows Max the entire town and all the memories of Chloe in order to try to communicate, this is the cost of the choice, but it's still your choice in a way that it can speak and Max can understand. That last choice in Life is Strange were the only two solutions the Raven had to give that could save the town from Mr. Jefferson. I've said in a previous video that the Raven, aka Arcadia Bay, wants the events of Before the Storm to happen in a certain way to lead to the events of Life is Strange. 
But why? Why would the raven want the events of Life is Strange to happen? It's so sad and horrible. Are they evil? No, because it's not all powerful. It's just all seeing. It can see Jefferson coming to hurt and kill its innocent baby gay residents, but what can it do? It can only see the future. It can't stop it. All of its powers are based around prophecy and seeing all possible outcomes, which it proves by showing the future in the dreams it appears in, which sounds kind of familiar, right? We'll get to that though. Sometimes people need you though. Even when they don't admit it. She needs you, Chloe, because I can see what will happen to her and the others. And you are the only solution I can make with my powers. Of all the possibilities and paths, you are central to solving an incoming evil. Because if you remember, Chloe's death is how Jefferson is brought to justice. That or Chloe leads Max to find Jefferson in the Chloe Lives version as well. Both paths with Chloe lead to Jefferson's evil ending. Additionally, the Prescotts are not exactly good for the economy and well-being of the town. In both endings, the family is taken out of the equation. Nathan makes the family look super bad and supposedly they lose control of the city. The city's like kind of blown over and the Prescotts just leave and it's rebuilt better or something. I don't know, good stuff or something. All of this is due to Chloe's unending love and loyalty to Rachel. To find her and bring her justice no matter what. The Raven needed Chloe and Rachel to fall in love in order to save Arcadia Bay. But why sacrifice Chloe and Rachel? It's not so much of a sacrifice as the Raven trying to stop the evil when and where it can. It has limited abilities and can only lead a horse to water. So think of it as preventing further deaths and pain, rather than giving up more people. If Chloe and Rachel never fell in love, Mr. Jefferson would have no opposition in Life is Strange. He would train Nathan to be like him, and the cycle of abused teenage girls would continue for what could be decades, and they could even escalate to murder on a regular basis rather than by accident. And that's why I think Arcadia Bay itself gave Max her powers. Butterfly shows up right when Max gets her powers and only comes back after Max loses her powers. And the very moment Max uses her powers for the first time, the Eye of Providence lines up right behind her head. The Eye is used to symbolize the Eye of God. This is the exact moment that Arcadia Bay gives Max the power to see the future and see all possible timelines to a more limited extent. Arcadia Bay speaks through animals. It shows Max where to go through the deer. It shows where Mr. Jefferson is through the owl at the creep barn and where you find Rachel's body. And it gifts Max with the butterfly. And before the storm, its shape is that of the raven. I also have this feeling that people who die tragic deaths in Arcadia Bay become part of it. Kind of like a force ghost from Star Wars. I don't have any way to prove it. For example, William becomes a part of Arcadia Bay and gives it the want to guide Chloe to happiness, but Arcadia Bay still wants to stop Jefferson. It's like a big blob of power and William's soul affects it until it can move on knowing Chloe is kind of maybe okay. Same thing with the deer. The deer is Rachel's soul as a part of Arcadia Bay. All right, all right, all right, okay, okay. It's like how Obi-Wan Kenobi is like a part of the force and the force's will but he's still his own dude kind of like when obi-wan kenobi's like luke use the force like the force wants luke to succeed and also obi-wan kenobi is a part of the force so the force is like hey obi-wan kenobi whisper in luke's ear to use me and then obi-wan kenobi's like good idea because i'm a part of you so it's like that, but with Arcadia Bay. So anyway, too long didn't read. When Max uses her rewind power, she is seeing different timelines and choosing the best one she sees at the time, which is a limited version of Arcadia Bay's powers that it proves to have in the prophetic dreams, it gifts to Chloe, and also people who die tragic deaths become a part of Arcadia Bay. 
in a way, kind of like a force ghost. They become more powerful than you can ever imagine. I told you it was gonna be crazy, okay? But anyway, hope you liked it. Bye.